I have clicked onto the Global Tropical RE for January the 15th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the project pressure are mine alone, and we're making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. We're now in the final hours here before a landfall or extremely close pass to La Reunion of Cyclone Bilal. You can see it here. This is the radar out of La Reunion. The island of La Reunion is here. This is Mauritius. And you can see here is the inner core of our cyclone. Now, the storm has been struggling today. And in La Reunion, we've gotten a stroke of luck here. The storm has been experiencing stronger shear than forecast and it has not been able to rapidly intensify as we talked about last night or, or yesterday morning rather uh, before it comes into the island the bad news is the system is still strong it has went to about 90 knots which is about 105 miles per hour which i believe is the estimate from the joint type of warning center but is also i believe mfr has a very similar estimate so that's still very strong and that can certainly cause a lot of power outages a lot of trees to come down, and a lot of structural damage. Alongside that, we are expecting extreme rainfall over the island as the system comes through. Rainfall totals from the storm may exceed a thousand millimeters, and a lot of that may fall in the next 12 to 24 hours. And this is going to be an extreme event for the island. And we are super fortunate that the storm did not rapidly intensify to, say, a, a major cyclone uh, before it came in, but certainly. Is the winds were not going to be the only impact, and even without the rapid intensification, we're looking still at extreme impacts here in La Reunion. Uh, just some watch and warning information, just firsthand. We have a red cyclone alert for La Reunion. What this means pretty much is impacts from a cyclone are imminent, and you need to be in shelter now, and you don't want to go outside until you are told it's safe from local officials and Mateo France. Uh, and once that aisle wall comes in, the outside conditions will be extremely dangerous. So if you are outside for any reason today, make sure that you get inside into a safe place, most central part of your home, in the most central part, as that will uh, get you in the safest place away from the strongest of winds. Now, for Mauritius, we have a Class 1 Cyclone Warning still in place. I don't know if that's going to be upgraded uh, to a Class 2 uh, because the system is forecast to stay south of you. Now, there is still a chance that the core gets a little bit close. If we do see a sudden eastward bend uh, just north of La Reunion, which still is within the realm of possibility, you could get this inner core a little bit closer to the island, and that could prompt maybe the the requirements for higher class warnings which are basically the warnings for hurricane or cyclone force winds uh and if we'll keep, have to keep an eye on if this core does get a little bit closer but right now the current trajectory has the system tracking well south of mauritius south enough that you get out of the main hurricane force wind field associated with this now having said that you're still going to have dangerous impacts and it's I recommend that you, that you stay inside today in a safe place because we have all of these outer bands here moving into the island. And that's going to have tropical storm force winds, heavy rainfall, and the potential for tornadoes as it moves through, especially stronger bands like this one that you see here west of the island. And stay tuned to uh, the, uh, excuse me, the Mauritius Meteorological Services for the latest information on any severe weather that may come your way. Uh, now I'm going to show you the forecast cone from Mateo, France. You can see the storm right now, uh, again, northwest of La Reunion, having a track right through the island on their forecast still. And uh, as I talked about, cyclone force winds, winds over 100 miles per hour, and storm surge, that could be of a few meters uh, above normally dry ground. And alongside that, we'll also be getting ex extreme rainfall. And I'll show you a rainfall map from a model in just a moment. You can see Mauritius is still in some of the significant wind field here. Uh, the tropical storm force wind field is about here. But keep in mind, like I said, these bands coming in will have the possibility. I got the wrong pen there. But it will have the possibility to bring you tropical storm force winds. And those gusts could get pretty high. And that could cause some... Uh, stronger areas of wind and potentially 
power outages and some structural damage. Now, after the storm comes past La Reunion, we expect the storm to track east and then stall southwest of Rodrigues. And there's a lot of variability on what may happen here. The good news is the storm will likely weaken in this time as it's going to stall here and the waters are not too warm here. So they're likely going to, we're, we're likely going to see a weakening trend from the storm as it's sitting south of here. Uh, but exactly what happens here is a bit uncertain. Some models have it going south. Some models try to get it come back west a little bit more. Some models have it go a bit north, maybe to Rodrigues. Uh, for those in Rodrigues, the most important thing to do right now is just stay tuned to Mateo France and your local weather office, uh, just in case the possibility of the storm coming your way increases. I'm going to show you the watches and warnings now for La Reunion. You can see the red cyclone alert in effect for the entire island. Uh, again, what this means, cyclone impacts are imminent. The cyclone is almost on your doorstep right now. You can see the inner core right here, northwest of the island. And we've probably got maybe 6 to 12 hours before that thing comes ashore. And what you need to do is be in a safe place. Do not be outside. Conditions are deteriorating rapidly right now. And if you're along the beach, get out of there. The storm surge along the immediate coastline is likely to be significant here. Even though the system is not as strong as forecast, we're still likely going to see very strong waves and a lot of storm surge along the northern coast of La Reunion. Even the southern side as the storm pushes away, as the low pressure will be here, and you'll sort of get an onshore flow on the backside, and that could cause a significant surge on the southern side of the island. Uh, this is the bulletin from the Mauritius Meteorological Services. You can see class one is still in effect. This, like I said, it might get upgraded to class two or higher if the storm's center does come your way a little bit further north than forecast. But right now, the forecast is good for Mauritius, not seeing the, a, a very likely chance of cyclone force winds. But again, very dangerous conditions are still spreading over the island. Uh, finally, this is the HAFS model showing the potential for very ex extreme rainfall. You can see this is over the next 24 hours from the run, and you can see the very bright yellow colors here over La Reunion. Uh, that is about 24 inches of rain on this legend, which is uh, maxed out on this uh, graphic. The actual totals here in millimeters are likely going above 1,000 millimeters on this run. And there is great concern with the high topography that you can see on this top topography map here from Mateo, France. That we'll see a lot of flooding issues and mudslide issues along the island. So the most important thing you all can do in La Reunion is just stay inside and stay tuned to your local emergency management. And uh, they'll have the latest information for you on what to do uh, during the storm as it passes. Uh, now... The storm is not going to slowly move through La Reunion. It's going to move away in pretty short order. In about a day, it will be south of Mauritius, it looks like, on this forecast. And by then, conditions will begin to improve significantly. And then some of the recovery can uh, begin from the storm. Uh, now I'm going to go over some of the impacts of why the storm has not rapidly intensified today. That first section has been over the current watch and warning information but for those wanting to know what may have happened to the storm why it didn't rapidly intensify uh, i'm going to talk about that now so you can obviously see in the radar image that the storm is not what you would have expected from what i was talking about yesterday yesterday it seemed almost certain that we were going to get a significant rapid intensification event but the thing is with tropical cyclones they are a bit complex and small changes in the atmosphere can make for big differences in exactly what happens uh, what we've had today is some increased shear that was not forecast as well on models uh, as uh, we had th we had initially thought you can see on the water vapor imagery here's our storm but look here in madagascar we've got a lot of convection blowing up and on the southwestern side of those or sorry southeastern side we've got some streaming westerly flow coming into the western end of our storm. And if we look at a sounding from the GFS, I'm going to go back to a run a couple days ago. You can see that we had not too much shear forecast. Pay attention to the mid-levels here. Uh, let me get a better box so you can see the full wind bar. So you can see the weak winds there and the main shear was not too strong, about five knots. That's a favorable sign for the storm. But 
is we go into now, we have more significant mid-level shear here. In fact, this is 18 hours out. This shear is forecast to persist. But if I even go back to the start of this run, you can see that we still had moderate shear uh, contrast to what was forecast originally by the models. And I can show you that here. The for JFS forecast about uh, 2 to 9 knots of mean shear in prior runs. And here we are with a 16 knot shear. And the shear has been pushing against the storm all day today. And you can see the convection has been trying to wrap around uh, all day to close off this western side. But so far, at least from what we can tell on radar, it has not been able to do that. Now, I suppose it's possible that the radar may not be able to get the full sense of the northwestern eye wall at this time, maybe because of the higher cloud tops in the southeastern eye wall. Uh, but at least from indications right now, it does not look like the system is doing too well. This is a more recent microwave pass. It did unfortunately cut the storm center in half, so we don't fully know what's happening on the western side, but you can see the very strong band on the, north, on, on the southeastern side, maybe a hint of it trying to wrap around. Uh, but right now, the storm is not in a state to rapidly intensify. And uh, fortunate for La Reunion, uh, we really, like I said last night, we were looking at a pretty likely chance of a significant rapid intensification event. And this is a real stroke of luck here. Very small change in the atmosphere made for a big difference uh, today. So very interesting to look at. Uh, that's all that I've got for now. We'll probably talk about the more wide tropics tomorrow once the storm has passed La Reunion, as there are other systems active, and it may get a little bit busy in the tropics as we go over the next week or two. But once again, in La, La Reunion and Mauritius, stay safe ahead of the storm and stay safe as it comes through. I'll leave links to Mateo France and the Mauritius Meteorological Services in the description below at the top so you can go right to that and get the latest watch and warning information. With that, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.